So hey everyone, Mr. Blyer here along with Ms. Barnes and Ms. Martinez and we're trying to show you the Energy Flow Lab that you're going to be running as a class. We're going to try to show you all three roles that students might play in pairs. Here's the first role. Ms. Barnes is currently loading 10 beans per cup into little sun cups. So these are going to be our sun groups that deliver new sunlight energy to our plant groups. So maybe one person in the pair can fill the cups of 10 and then the other person uh, can be tallying how many cups of 10 you make with tally marks like this. And you can of course switch roles uh, so that you're not doing the same thing all the time. You're also going to need to deliver those cups of 10 to plant groups. Remember that only autotrophs or producers can use sunlight energy. So make sure to deliver it only to the groups that have the green cups uh, being producers. So Ms. Barnes and Ms. Martinez are just going to kind of switch roles here. So let's pretend that they are now the plant groups receiving the sunlight energy. Um, in reality, different groups will be playing these roles. So uh, they can receive each cup of 10, and then you're going to find that you have a card at your station making sure you're clear on how to divvy up that uh, cup of 10 beans, um, doing what all organisms need to do. I would recommend that maybe you put the cups in the order of the sheet, that will just make it easier for yourself. And then you can split up the beans accordingly. Maybe uh, one bean for growth, two beans for reproduction, two beans for immune defense, three beans for daily maintenance. What do all organisms need to do? They need to grow, reproduce, and stay alive or maintain homeostasis. Again, maybe somebody else can be tallying, the other partner of the pair can be tallying as you put beans in those cups. Maybe you can just write twos like that. Um, just a brief warning that, that each class might run a slightly different scenario, so really make sure to look at your card to know exactly how you're allocating your energy. We're going to have different classes simulate different conditions to see how it affects energy flow. Okay, so we've kind of zoomed ahead here. When will the plant groups change what they do? They will raise their hands once they have 10 total beans in their growth cup, because that's a time where the herbivores, uh, which I'm kind of uh, symbolizing here, can come over and eat them by taking the 10 beans out of their growth cup. Go ahead and just leave the growth cup uh, there for the plants. Um, the plant groups will take the other four cups full of beans and they're going to go dump them in our class uh, bucket that is labeled waste heat energy. Remember that they've already spent that energy doing other things and so that heat energy has already left their bodies and is unavailable to the next trophic level, the herbivores. And then of course you'll just keep playing like normal and you'll get new cups of 10 from the sun groups and you'll uh, continue to play as plants. Okay, so let's follow me now, the herbivore. I just grabbed 10 beans from the plant growth cup, and as it turns out, um, herbivore pairs will have their own set of five cups, as shown here. You'll also have your own tally sheet to fill out. So maybe one person can fill out the tally sheet, the other person can split up the beans as indicated in your instructions. You're gonna play this game too, grabbing energy where you can from the plants, and when you get 10 beans in your growth cup, you're gonna raise your hand because your teachers are gonna represent the carnivores at the next trophic level who will eat your growth once you have a chance um, to grow enough. And that's the game, basically.